Hello everybody and welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T and today I wanted to go back to some of the basics of Microsoft Excel and sports modeling and trying to build models through simple spreadsheets like Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel. Now somebody did reach out to me and they said that they don't even know the basics of Microsoft Excel and that's completely okay. Microsoft Excel can be extremely complex or extremely simple depending upon how much you use it and how much time you put in to learn some of the features and behaviors. So with that being said, I wanna start a new series based upon using Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets and how to start as if you had no information. All you do is you know how to click the Microsoft Excel button to open up a spreadsheet and that's it. So that's what we're gonna be going through. So in this video, it's gonna be a lot of simplistic formulas and things that you might find useful. We're gonna be covering things like sum, median, mean, standard deviation, uh, VLOOKUPs, random function, match, indirect match, and a correlation. And we're gonna be using some data on Travis Kelsey to try and show how these things work. So let's go ahead and dive on into the spreadsheet to get the basics of some of these formulas. So as I've mentioned per a request, someone has asked that I kind of go through and demo uh, Microsoft Excel and a little bit of this and how you can slowly build up to models. So again, the basics are gonna be that you have a Microsoft Excel workbook and inside of that workbook are gonna be a bunch of sheets. Now the sheet is the thing that you're actually working inside of that has all of the lines on it in the grid. So if we slide this up, you're gonna go ahead and see that it says sheet one. This can be renamed or you can add additional sheets inside of your workbook. Now these are what house all the data when you're trying to build models or do calculations. So the first thing is let's go get some data. So we're gonna go to footballreference.com. So once we went to Travis Kelsey's page and went to the 2022 season, you're gonna see this data here that says regular season. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is collect this information. Now you can either highlight it this way or you can do which I prefer, which is go to get table as CSV for Excel and then just highlight this, copy it, come back into Microsoft Excel, go into cell A1 and hit Control V for Control Paste. Now that you've got that, you're gonna click data in this top ribbon up at the top where you see file, home, insert, draw, page layout, formulas, and then data. When you're on the data tab, there is a button right here that says text to columns. You're gonna click that. This modal is gonna open up and it'll say delimited. That's what you want. You'll hit next and you're gonna choose comma. Now this isn't pre-selected, you'll have to select it yourself. And then you'll just go ahead and hit next and finish. And what it's gonna do is split out all of your data based upon columns. So now here we have this row, we can get rid of this one, we don't really need this one. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and get rid of all of his rushing stats because we don't really care about that. Um, again, for this basic demo, we are not gonna need it. And I'm just gonna delete this top row which says that they're receiving because again, I already deleted out all of the rushing stats. Now, if you have your data all kind of wonky like this and things are spread out, what you can do to snap this stuff back in is you highlight all the columns you want, go in between the letters and double click when you have that double arrow and it squishes everything together to make it nice and easy to read. So I'm gonna go ahead and also delete out the data here and I'm gonna insert uh, a handful of columns. Let's just go three and say insert. So there's some things that we're gonna cover that are very basic in Microsoft Excel. So these are gonna be the basics of what we can do within Microsoft Excel, which is really nice and you can do far more complex things as things move on and on and on, but these are gonna be the basics for right now. So to do a sum, you would hit equals sum, open parenthesis, and then select the range of data you want. So if I wanted to sum all of his targets throughout the 2022 season, I'll go ahead and do that and close parenthesis, and that's saying give me the summation of N2 to N18, and if I hit enter and expand this out, it will show 152. And the same thing can be done for median. If I wanna find the median, I would just say equals median. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. And we'll come back up in here and hit enter. The median is eight. Now I did forget one, so let's go ahead and put in here mean. So the mean, the average, that's important too. So we're gonna say equal average and same thing of the targets. Close that parenthesis in 8.94118. Now the standard deviation, you're gonna get a few more options. If you type in STDEV, you're gonna get a population or a sample. 
This is slightly different in the way that it calculates it. Unless you have the true population set of data, you're gonna go ahead and use sample. Um, in some cases you could use population, but again, I just err on the side of caution and go with the sample. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that one out. So the standard deviation for the targets is gonna be 2.43, now random. There's a bunch of things you can do with random and I use those for a lot of different scenarios like things like uh, Monte Carlos and things like that. So you'd say equal R-A-N-D. Now you're getting some options. You have rand, rand array, which gives you an array of random numbers. An array is kind of like a collection or a set. It's the easiest way to think of it. And rand between. Now rand is gonna go ahead and be in between zero and one. So if you're trying to force a decimal value, that's what you would wanna use. So you can just say rand and hit enter. It's gonna give you a decimal. Your other option is rand between. So if you have some set of values that you want the number to fall between, uh, let's say 100 is our bottom end, and then we'll say 200 is our top end, it'll give us a random number in there. Now, when you do get confused on some of these formulas and you start to type them out, say you select one. So we're gonna say ran between. Microsoft Excel does give you some nice helper text, which means that the first input value within the ran between is gonna be for the bottom. And you can see that in bold right there and then it'll tell you what's next. So I'd say 100, and then I'd put a comma as it shows there. And now it's saying, all right, now you're entering your top information. So I'm gonna say 500, if I could actually type 500, and now we have that. Now, the VLOOKUP. Uh, the VLOOKUP is a way of trying to find data within a table that you create. Now, it's not a real table within Microsoft Excel. You're creating almost like a virtual table um, the best way, that's the best way I can think of it. So what you do is your table is the data you actually are highlighting or selecting to look up from. So let's say we want to look up data and I want to get the targets for the 10-16-2022 game. I'm going to put the date in here so that we don't lose it. And I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP. And the lookup value is going to be C6, which is that date we just put in. The table is going to be this full thing. Now, I could short it and put it here or here or here. It doesn't really matter um, how you build the VLOOKUP. You just need to be sure that it includes the data set that you're looking through. So when I'm doing this, um, if I'm trying to find a player and I've got thousands upon thousands of rows and I don't know where it's at, I have to include all of those. And same thing with the columns. So we're gonna come across all the way on all the columns. Once I've highlighted the entire column sets, I'm gonna hit comma. So then it's gonna say, what column do you want to return? Well, we want the targets. So the reason I don't like VLOOKUP is because when I have hundreds of columns of data, I need to know which column each letter stands for. Now, as I've got a few hundred, it gets really hard to know which number that column value is. Now you can use uh, different things online that have like little cheat sheet tables and things like that. But let's say I wanna get the targets. I'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So it's in column 10 and then I'm gonna hit comma. And there's the true, which is a fuzzy match, which you don't wanna do. Very rarely do I ever use fuzzy match. That's more of trying to find things uh, to look up quickly and that I want to verify something. I don't use it when I'm doing a calculation formula. You'll enter false, which means an exact match. So if we look at the formula, we're going to say equals VLOOKUP, the value I want it to look up, and that value has to always be in the most left column. So it's going to say, find the date that's in C6, find it within this table. Now it's got to be within columns E, the first column. I want you to return me the value in column 10 of that table where it matches. So it will go ahead and say, get me the value of C6, find it within this table, go over 10 columns, grab that data point and return it, and make sure that the date is exactly the same because we have false. So we'll just hit that. So it returns me 10 for 10, 16, and that's what we have. Now, if I were to change this to true, we may get something else because it's using fuzzy logic. So let's say 1013. So 1013 is not a date stored in here. However, it is giving us back eight. 
So 1013 is very similar to 1010. Uh, so it's gonna go ahead and return us back that data set right there. It could also be returning back this data set. So that's why you always wanna try and use false because it returns back the exact match. So if you wanna come in here and then type in false again, you're gonna get this NA, which means that it can't find this value. It doesn't exist, it doesn't make sense to the formula, so it breaks. So we're gonna go ahead and switch that out so it works. All right, now a match is similar to a VLOOKUP, only it's doing the first piece of the VLOOKUP. So if I say equal match C6, comma, the lookup array is saying, where are you looking? Now there's a couple ways you could do this. You could click and drag and do, again, a small piece of your data set. You could do the whole data set that way, or you can just designate the entire column if all the data resides within that one column. I'll hit comma, and then instead of using true or false, I'm gonna say zero. So zero is an exact match. So I'm gonna go ahead and say zero, and it returns seven. Now the reason it's returning seven is that is the row that it found that value in. So if you were to come in here and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that means this data point that we're looking up is in row seven. So that makes sense. And that's all that's doing is it's telling you which row it's in. Now for indirect, and we'll hit equals. Now if you see some of these numbers changing, it's because things like random are meant to change every time you interact with a cell. So if you see this number flipping throughout the video, don't worry, nothing's breaking. It's just that every time uh, the sheet executes, it goes ahead and runs for a new number. So within this, we can say indirect, and I wanna say, let's go ahead and say K to try and get it to return a team name, and I'm gonna put the ampersand, and then I'm gonna say 11. So what this is gonna do is say, get me the data that is stored within column K and 11. And the reason this is an indirect is because you're indirectly building a reference. You could say equals K11, but you're not always gonna know the column or the row or things like that. So indirect allows you to build a formula like that so it indirectly references that data set. So I am gonna go ahead and do that, and that's LAC. Now if I were to say equals K11, we get the same thing. But again, I knew exactly where to go. So the reason indirect is useful is because now we can mix in an indirect and a match and it'll work like a VLOOKUP. And this is why I like this a little bit more. So if I have hundreds of columns and I know what column letter my data set is in, I can do it this way. I can say equals indirect, put in my quote, and we're gonna say that targets is in column N and, and I'm gonna add the ampersand. And then I'm gonna say match C6 from column E to E, right? Because we're just saying just check that entire column. Zero for our perfect match. And then close it with the two parentheses. So this is a nested match formula within the indirect. And what we're doing is building essentially a VLOOKUP without having to include the entire table without having to know the column number that the data is in, I just need to know the letter, and then I can go ahead and do that. So this is gonna say, concatenate the letter N with whatever number is returned from this match. And as we know, match returns back the row where we found the data, which is gonna be seven. So this is gonna say, take N and add the number seven to it, which is gonna create a cell location on the sheet and give me that data back. So that gave us 10, which is what we did here. Now, this looks a little bit complicated, but this can actually give you more flexibility when you're trying to build dynamic ranges and things like that. The downside to this though, is if you move your sheet around, you have to update the letter, where in a VLOOKUP, it automatically updates in most cases. If I shift the table to the right, it updates. If I shift the table to the left, it updates. But for me, usually when I put my data in, I'm not shifting and moving my table around. I know it's staying where it is. Uh, I might move columns around within the table, which is why I like using indirect. So if I wanted to change things up and I say, I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna put it into a different location, right? And I do that, this is still gonna reference that same number. And then I'd have to think, oh man, okay, I moved it back one. Let me go ahead and update this. Whereas this, I can just say, oh, okay. I went ahead and moved it into column M and I'm done. 
And this to me is a lot less thinking, especially if I move a column from way over here to somewhere in the middle of the data set. All right, and the last one that we need to go over is the correlation. Now a correlation, again, is the relationship between data. Is it a strong relationship? Is it a weak relationship? And in order to do that in Microsoft Excel, you'll just hit equal, coral, and then inside the parentheses, select your first set of data. So we're going to go ahead and receptions, and then we're going to hit comma, and then we're going to choose the yards. And we'll just close the parentheses and hit enter, and that is the correlation between receptions to yards, 0.48731. So then we can also change some of this data out, so we're going to go ahead and say targets to yards instead. Make sure that this is the same length. So when you do this, you need to have the same length of data as far as how many rows you're including. And that's a little bit weaker. So a correlation can be done in Microsoft Excel uh, just using Coral. And this is a great way to find data that you might be able to use for your models. So if you want to try and check out different data points and things like that, you can easily set up a correlation and just run it across a bunch of pieces of data and see how they're all playing together and if there's a good relationship, a bad relationship. Now, I know these are a lot of basic things. However, this is going to be extremely useful as we start to build more and more and more within Microsoft Excel as we keep adding on and on and on and learning how to kind of combine everything to make some betting models, whether it's sides and totals or prop models. So, like I said, it's very bare bones basics to try and get people stood up on Microsoft Excel. This is not meant for the advanced users. However, if you are an advanced user and you saw something in here that was useful, awesome. Uh, I'm glad that you found it useful. If you think that this could be useful for anybody, for people that are advanced or people that are brand new, feel free to give it a thumbs up. That way it goes ahead and pushes it to the top of the algorithm in YouTube and other people can find this kind of information as well. If you like the content that I am providing, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you will be notified as soon as my next piece of content is available, whether it's a short on prop picks or building advanced models in Python or more within this series on how to stand up a model in Microsoft Excel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop a comment on the video. Uh, you can also reach me on Twitter or X at wagered on tilt. I am in the unabated discord as the T and if there's any other content that you would like to see made within any of my videos, please let me know. I love to try and build out some things that you find personally that would be best or more helpful for you. So that is it for the first of this series. So until next time, happy wagering.